What's going on? Figured I would do a quick little video, or maybe not so quick, whatever. Talking about the RX100 Mark III. Why I think it's a good camera for vlogging if you're just getting into it, or you know, if you've been doing it for a while and you're using your cell phone or you know GoPro or something. If if you're using what you're using and it works, then then good. Keep keep at it. If you're using something and you're not 100 percent happy with it. I think the RX100 might be worth your time to look at. Now, if you haven't looked into the line, the only, and you would get it out of the way that the only RX100 that has a built-in microphone input is the Mark 7. So, if you wanted to use a shotgun mic or a little Rode Video Micro or one of the clones of it or uh, a live mic or something you can only do it on the 7 which is the newest one so it's the most expensive one it is what it is the reason why I like this camera I think it's an ideal camera for vlogging as well as for someone who's into photography if you're into both is it's a great camera for both it records excellent quality video and it takes excellent quality photos now, that being said the Mark IV and below don't do 4K. The 5 does it with some limitations. I think the 6 it got better. The 7 it got a little bit better. Or maybe it got a lot better on the 7. I don't exactly know. The 6 and 7 also have a 24 to 70 millimeter, or 24 to 200 millimeter focal range. The others have. I think the one had some, something different, but most of them are about the 24 to 70. So, I kind of just had a brain, whatever. Um, point being, I would be, I would start at the Mark III on up. The Mark One didn't have. A uh, flip out screen or an articulating screen. The Mark II had a hot shoe, and I don't believe I think it still didn't have an articulating screen. It may have though, but I would stick from the three on up. Um, they all offer the ability to flip the screen up, so if you want to point the camera toward yourself and record yourself, you can do that. The six and seven, I believe you to, you can fold the screen 90 degrees downward. So if you need to take a photo or video of something straight down, you can do that. Or if you're holding the camera way up above your head, you can look up at the screen, point it down, and, and get a picture that way or video that way or whatever. The one downfall, I will say, other than the lack of mic input, is these cameras aren't the greatest on battery. So if you're going, if you're vlogging for the whole day, or you're out taking photos for the whole day, you may want to carry a second or third battery or some means to charge it. Whether that's bringing a little battery bank with you, or that's bringing a wall charger with you, you you need something to give yourself some extra juice if you're planning to be out and about the whole day. Um, but what you are getting with the camera is a camera that takes, like I said, excellent video, excellent photos. You can get the little shooting grip for it, which I have two of them actually, and I use them, and it, they're very handy. Um, like others have said, it would have been nice if they had incorporated, you know, a battery into it or or a mic input to be able to add a microphone to the earlier cameras that didn't have a microphone, but you know, it, it really is just, you know, gives you a good, you know, way to hold the camera plus controls for the camera and the ability that you can fold the, the legs out on it and make a little mini, you know, table tripod or something. So if you need to put the camera down and record something, it gives you that ability. Or if you want to put it down and record yourself talking or doing something, you have that ability too, all within that one little accessory. And I think that's, you know, the good, one of the things that drew me to this camera is the fact that, you know, they've, they've put a lot into the camera, even though it's, you know, it is lack, some of them are lacking in some areas and as they've gone through the versions, 
you know they've added more and more features that make it more and more useful to a broader customer base and one thing I, I did forget to mention this is more for the photography aspect not so much the video aspect is the addition the I think it started on the three is they have the pop-up viewfinder um, on the six and the seven when you uh, looking for the right word here when you basically pop the viewfinder up it's basically you just push a little button it pops up and pops out um, if you're familiar with that basically on the other ones you had to pop the viewfinder up and then pull out on the little eyepiece on it and to put it away you had to push the little eyepiece back in and push the viewfinder down on the newer ones it pops up and the little view eyepiece part pops out on it um, I know early on in the sixes there were some people fussing about that it if you had to adjust the diopter it kind of just because of the inertia of it popping out it would kind of kind of tend to you know move itself and and go to the middle I don't know if that's still an issue I haven't heard anything about it recently so it was probably something that was eventually fixed my mark six doesn't exhibit that problem but Apparently, a few people actually did have an issue with that on their camera. To me, I think the the on going back to the audio side, I think the onboard onboard audio, you know, the microphones are just fine. Obviously, I, I don't record in noisy environments. You know, when I'm sitting around in a vehicle, and there's no, you know, it's a pretty noise isolated environment. You know, I don't have loud things running around me. If I did, I would probably just use the workaround that many people do and use, you know, like a little uh, field recorder or something and use some small, like, voice recorder and a lav mic and just start the recording and, you know, have have, the, have it clipped onto my shirt the wire run through, you know, my clothing down into my, to the recorder tucked in my pocket or something or clipped on my belt or whatever, um, but as far as I'm concerned, the audio is just fine on this. Um, if you are in a, in, a, in a windy environment, some people have stuck uh, little dead cats or whatever, um, or some piece of material to kind of help shield the microphones that are on top from some of the noise. The only issue in doing that is you do somewhat block the, you know, depending on how you position it and how big it is, you can block the use of the flash on the camera and the pop-up viewfinder, so, yeah. Um, but overall, you know, it's a good camera for, for vlogging, photography, for doing a little mix of both. Um, now, on my camera in particular, I actually... I've modified it a little bit. I've talked about this, and I, I still do need to get around to making a video on it. But <clears throat> basically, the way I have my camera set up is for stills, switch it over to program mode. And I'm pretty much running program mode as auto. Just saying. Um, I'm running the ISO in there as auto. Center uh, spot uh, for the focus. And I just focus and recompose. I have it on single shot autofocus um, but I have it shooting as one to one black and white I have the contrast bumped up in the saturation or not saturation sharpness something but I basically have the two settings that you can bump up bumped up to uh, plus three and I like the images it produces you know I have it basically set up to where the image it's going to put out in JPEG or in RAW which the RX100 series does allow you to shoot in RAW. Is I basically have it set up to where the image that I'm getting out of the camera, minus maybe a little bit of tweaking, but honestly none, um, is ready to throw up on Instagram if I want to. Um, now, if I switch it to like the normal auto mode, it goes to like the default color image. It does shoot in, and still, it stays shooting at one to one. But the raw file is, is not the cropped in image of that. So, um, 
I do, I do kind of wish that there would be a way, which I guess it's one of those, you know, it is what it is, but I, I would, I would really like, and I'm being picky here, but I really like if you, if you shot a JPEG plus raw, that it would give you basically frame lines for your one to one, but show you the full image that you're getting as the raw file. That way, if you wanted, you know, if I, if I chose to crop it, it differently we're using that raw file I could or I could also kind of compose for both images get the, the, the composition I want for the one-to-one -one, but also be able to see what my full image would look like so I can know okay you know maybe it'd be better to shift it this way just just a little you know and even if it didn't give you you know I'm just being picky here I guess that's the arcs on customer base because it seems like everybody's got something to say about what they wish the arcs on it had or or what they took away from a previous generation that they wish the new generation had so it is what it is so anywho thanks for watching